Hi friends, Susan Campfield here with ccampfield.com. I was running across the room and trying to hurry back before you went live. Good evening, happy Saturday everyone. Welcome to my stamp room, come on in. We're gonna relax and create together. It's such a hectic time of year with the holidays, so I am looking forward to creating with you this evening. Um, in our last video, we made something called a Dutch door card. And tonight we're going to make, which is a vertical card, tonight we're going to make the barn door fun fold card, which is uh, the Dutch door uh, horizontal, <laughs> if that makes sense. It will when we're done. So welcome everyone. So glad that you're here with me. I want to remind you that I do send out project sheets by email. Those only go out by email. You can subscribe to those by going to suestampfield.com. Uh, click on subscribe and then you can choose project sheets or blog or both whichever you prefer and then you'll get project sheets in the mail uh, in your email they have not gone out for a while i've been super busy here i bet you've been busy too um but it's coming and so uh, we will be doing the dutch door um, you can let me know at the end of this video if you want the barn door in that project sheet email as well. And uh, we have some other ones too, so we might have to part it out here. But don't worry, we'll get it done. We'll get it done. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm going to just make that go away. And we can go ahead and dive in and get started. I wanted to thank each and every one of you for uh, making and sending handmade cards. Um, I know how much it means to get that handmade card in the mailbox. So thank you for all you're doing to make the world a kinder place. I appreciate you. Ha Aloha, Lisa. How are you? So good to see you all tuning in here. Colorado, Wisconsin, all over. Iowa's tuning in. Woohoo, my home state. All right, we're going to go ahead and flip the camera here and get this party started oh my gosh um yeah here we go Woohoo! all right so these are the cards that we made in the last video well actually i take that back we made these two in the last video and then after the video i made this third one so this is the dutch door card and it opens up like this so um, you've got the half door um, for the Dutch fold. And then this is, uh, I made this one a gift card holder by adding these cute little gift card pocket envelopes. They're in the mini catalog. They're super hidden. They're about to retire. Um, and they're, uh, yeah, they're on sale, I believe. So super uh, inexpensive to pick up. Oh my gosh, that's right. I wanted to remind you, hang on, hold the phone. I've been getting so many inquiries. Um, this month I am doing a special. So if you place an um, online order with me, not only do you earn the, the Crafternoon class for next month, I'm way away from the mic, you're also going to get a bonus, a little Christmas gift from me. This is a found it package. It has ribbon, embellishments, designer paper in it, good fun good things in there so if you place a 50 dollars order you get a found it pack if you order 75 you're going to get more stuff in your found it pack and if your order is 100 you get even more stuff um i only have nine of these left so just a heads up i've been getting a lot of inquiries how many are left so there's nine left <laughs> all right i'm gonna flip here uh okay let's go back to what we we're talking about so the um the fold is this is the dutch door fold and these two, all, all three of these actually were done with the Modern Garden Designer Series paper. That paper is about to retire. And um, I used the Modern Oval Punch on all three and also the, uh, oh, what's it called, Jennifer? Oh, it's a Modern Garden is a stamp set. I'm so sorry. Walk in the Garden is the name of the designer paper. This is the one I did after the video and posted it over on our Sue Stampfield Facebook group. I often do that with the alternate cards, post them over there. So those are, that's the, that's the vertical version of this fold. Tonight, we're gonna take a crack <laughs> at the other uh, direction of the fold. So, and I did ask my uh, friends over on the Sue Stampfield Facebook group if they um, wanted to, if they wanted me to show um, new product tonight, uh, like a sneak peek of what's coming, or if they would prefer I showed a current product. And it was quite interesting to me. I thought I would get a lot of people that the majority would be asking for um, new product. And that was actually not the case. It was, um, it was fairly split, um, uh, pretty, pretty divided. So 
we're going to make two cards. <laughs> I don't know what the voting ended up being exactly because um, I didn't look right before I started. Uh, maybe Jennifer did. Oh, Jennifer did. Okay, here's the, oh, okay. It was it was actually, the sneak peeks did squeak out quite a bit, didn't they? There were almost twice as many sneak peek requests. So it was 29 for sneak peek, 16 for current product, and 10 people said, doesn't matter. Either one is good. So we're going to do both. What the heck? It's Saturday night. We're going to do a little Saturday night crafting, my friends. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and start by cutting my, my uh, it's not designer paper, Susan. I'm going to cut my basic white cardstock at four and a quarter inches um, by 11. So I'm cutting it the long way. Put that aside. And then next, I'm going to score it at five and a half. I just need to move that out of my way here. And we're going to score it at five and a half. All right, so far, easy peasy, right? Not, not a, nothing different than the normal card making process when you're making a, a horizontal card with a long sheet of cardstock. Now we're going to get funky here. <laughs> we're going to go to the two inch mark of our paper trimmer. And we're going to cut from the two inch mark, but only halfway. When we get to that score line down here, we're going to stop. And you can see that score line is right at the five and a half inch mark. On my cutting blade, there is a little, boy, can you see that? Mm, maybe. <laughs> If I tilt it and light just right. Anyway, there is a notch right here that is perfect that shows you exactly where the blade is so you know when to stop. So I'm going to cut it two inches and I'm going to slide down to that five and a half inch score line or you can use the ruler on the side, either one, and stop. Okay, so now I've got, I've got a, a wiggly woggly here and then we're going to put it back in the paper trimmer and I'm gonna cut on the score line down to that cut line and stop. So just line that up. So I'm lining up the score line in the cutting groove of my trimmer, just double checking that I'm in the right spot. And then I'm cutting down to where the two inch mark, or you can just stop when you see that you've intersected with the cut piece, okay? And then I just tug on it, make sure it pulls off. If it doesn't pull off, I didn't cut far enough, right? Now you'll notice I did not, and there we have our, our what we're looking for. I did not fold on that score line beforehand. The reason I didn't is if I fold on it and then, then I cut this, there's usually kind of a little lump here where that was already creased and folded. So I, I feel like it's a cleaner look if I don't fold it first and I fold it afterwards. It's personal preference. You can do whatever, whatever you like, <laughs> right? So, um, so we've got our, our fold here and we're gonna go ahead and just crease that now. Uh, let's find a bone folder. Ah, found it. All right, so we play a little game here at Sue Stanfield. If you haven't watched before, I'm a super messy crafter and I lose my stuff all the time. So when I lose something and then I find it again, we say found it and we take a sip of our beverage. So let me know what is in your cup tonight. I have ice water. Hmm. Even though it is colder in Minnesota today. All right, so we've got our basic white uh, card. It's all ready to be decorated. So let's do the fun part. <laughs> let's do the fun part. So we're going to make a, uh, a New Year's card tonight. And, you know, here's what I like about New Year's cards. Let me grab the stamp set we're going to use. I haven't even used this yet. I'm so excited to get to use it. Um, so this is the year. It's called Year to Celebrate. I believe this one is retiring from the catalog. It has the mini catalog. It has Happy New Year. And it has Happy Birthday. And then it has Party Tweeters. <laughs> is that what you call I don't know what you call them. And then the the blowy things and then some confetti congrats and party um so i'm going to use the happy new year out of this to make a new year's card and i'm going to use you know there's a wide variety of papers that you can use or you could you know do uh, embossing or whatever you want eggnog oh my gosh Corey, that is awesome i want eggnog <laughs> That's so much more fun than water. So we've got some options here. I am, I'm going to go with the winter garden paper. I just love this paper. It is so gorgeous. And so I would love you guys to help me design this card. So one option would be these two together, which actually this is, um, this is the flip side. 
of the same pattern, right? I just flipped it over. And um, these pieces of designer paper are two inches by uh, five and a quarter, okay? So that's one option. So to me, this I thought this would be kind of cute because it kind of looks like maybe fireworks in the sky or um, something similar to that. So that's one option. And, and don't worry, I'll put up the... I'll put up the voting here in a minute. I'll, I'll lay it out. I'll explain it a little better there. We're just looking at our options here. Or also from the winter garden paper, we have this one that has, you know, this one has a few more blueberries on it, <laughs> kind of like juniper berries. Um, and then we could do really pull out that blue by flipping it around and having that on the top. So that would be another, again, this is the same paper just flipped over. Now with this paper, there are so many, so many options that you could do. You could do the trees with this paper. The backside of this is the berries. Or you could do the trees with this one, the backside of the trees actually, um, and either one. But we're going to set those aside. We're going to go with one of these two. So I would like you to let me know in the comments if you want to go number one or number two. Number one or number two, let me know which one you want to do for our card. And while you're voting for that, I am going to figure out our greeting here. So I need to cut a piece of paper for my Happy New Year because that is going to go on the front. So I'm just peeling that off here. Get my Happy New Year out. This is a photopolymer um, stamp. As you can see, I'm just going to lay it down on my table so it can relax a little bit wipe off all the dust and dirt from my surface here and then I'm just going to grab a clear block and I'm going to smush it onto my block so there I've got my happy new year right there that's not 100% straight Susan hmm. will I remember that when I go to stamp probably not so I'm going to try to get it a wee bit straighter all right that's a bit better and then let me grab a little ruler here and see uh, what size paper I need for stamping this so it looks like this word is Oh, it's a little longer than three and a half. So if I made my piece four inches by one, I should be good to go. So let's see here. Where are we at? One, two, two, one, one. Ooh. I am seeing more ones, but it is pretty tightly contested. I'm seeing votes both on Facebook and on YouTube, but it looks like this one squeaked out the win here. So we're going to go ahead and use this paper for our card, but there's so many options, right? There's also, um, yeah, so many options. Okay, don't get distracted, Susan. We voted on this one, let's go for it. Okay, <laughs> to give myself a pep talk here. All right, oh, seriously, I, I get, um, ooh, the backside's, this one's even lighter. Okay, wait, I gotta look at this here. Hang on. This one's even more explodey sky, but it's a little bit lighter. Which one do I like better? Because the paper is the way it's designed, it's darker in some spots and lighter in others. I think I like it a little bit lighter. I'm gonna go with this. Again, you might want more pattern on the bottom and you could go that way, but a lot of the pattern is gonna be kind of covered up with our words. So I'm not gonna worry about that too much. So here's what I love about New Year's cards. Sometimes, we run we get a little behind at the holidays and it is hard to get those christmas cards done on time and oh there's also the situation where you got your cards done you sent them all out you ran out and then at christmas the day before christmas the day after christmas you get a card from someone that you didn't send to <laughs> and you're like oh no i need to send them a card so new year's cards are great because you can send them after christmas and here's the thing, they don't have to go on New Year's Day. They don't have to go on New Year's Eve. The new year lasts 12 months. <laughs> you can send them, you know, probably in January would be best, but any time in January was is gonna work, right? So if you're if you know things went a little awry and you didn't get around to the Christmas cards, hey, don't worry about it because you could just send New Year's cards. So I'm going to cut this. Um, this is the piece. You ran out of cards already and you're making more. You've got some time. You've got some time, right? So this was um, this was the piece we chopped off the top. 
I'm going to use it for my greeting because, hey, it doesn't have a purpose. So I'm going to give it one. So I'm going to cut that. What did I say, you guys? I said one inch by four, I think. I can always trim it down if I don't like it, if I think it's too long, right? One by four. And then we'll probably, we might layer it on a piece of Misty Moonlight, but I'm not sure yet. I'm going to cut one just in case we decide to do that. So we're going to cut a piece of Misty Moonlight that is one and a quarter. I'm super lazy to grab a full sheet because I know I have a boatload of scraps of this, but I'm too lazy to open my drawer. So one and a quarter by four and a quarter. All right. So that Misty Moonlight is going to kind of match our upper part. So that's where our Happy New Year is going to go. And then inside the card, you can write your sentiment. And I don't like to write a lot. So I love a card like this where it's nice and short. <laughs> I put all my love in the making of the card. Uh, not so much. I don't like to write a lot because I have um, I have arthritis in my hands and they get tired really fast. So there you go. All right. So we're going to go ahead and stamp our Happy New Year. We are going to use Misty Moonlight for that. Misty Moonlight, where are you? Oh, found it. It doesn't want to come out, but I found it. There it is. All right, take a sip, everyone. It wasn't very lost. It was exactly where it was supposed to be, but... But I don't know about you, but I'm getting thirsty, and someone's drinking eggnog, so I think it's Corey was drinking eggnog, so... <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and open up our Misty Moonlight ink pad. I don't think I... I was talking with one of my team members. I've never had spiced egg... Like, um like eggnog with alcohol in it. I'd never had it spiked. That was the word I want, not spiced. Spiced eggnog sounds good too, actually. All right, so we're gonna stamp our Happy New Year right here in misty moonlight on our piece of paper we cut there. And let's close that up. And let's take a look at our card. Now there are a lot of options that you could go with for um, for embellishing your card. Instead of using the cardstock back here, you could use a, um, if you were lucky enough to get the silver glimmer paper before that sold out, you could put the silver glimmer paper behind there. Just kind of really bling it up. I'm going with more of a nature look here. So I'm gonna stick with the Misty Moonlight and I'm gonna just go ahead and stick this down. Bad adhesive suit, Susan. You're not doing a good adhesive. Oh, I almost put it upside down, but that's okay. It wasn't stuck on yet. So I would have just flipped it, right? Not a not a not a big deal. Now I have <laughs> I was making cards for um my direct team members. Um and there were like four of them where I stamped the greeting on <laughs> on the inside of the part I decorated. Mm, yeah, oops. Oops, I had to cut off the fronts and I had to you can fix anything, right? All right, so we've got our dimensionals here. We're gonna go ahead and pop that up. Right here. You absolutely could add some ribbon. I'm gonna actually probably go with some gems, but you know, we could look at ribbon. I like gem, I like both actually. All right, so there we have our very simple Happy New Year card. Now, if you want to have even less, um, want to write even less on the inside, I'm so lazy, you guys. Um, this is throughout the year. And this one is Cheers to You and the New Year, which is really cute. Um, oh, look, something's missing. I wonder which one I, which one's floating around on my desk. Oh, I know. It was the happiest of birthdays. Mm, the happiest of birthdays because I'm using that for Crafternoon this month, which makes me remember to tell you that Crafternoon this month is going to be a little different because of the Christmas holiday. Normally, we would be having it on the Saturday, which is the Saturday right before Christmas, which is the Christmas Eve Eve, if you will. Um, but because that's such a busy time for people, uh, Jennifer and I decided to move Crafternoon up. So we'll be having Crafternoon actually on Thursday. Uh, what's that date? Thursday, December 21st. And it's actually going to be in the evening. So 
it's going to be called Crafternoon at Night <laughs> or Crafter Eve, or I don't know. We'll, we'll decide how we're going to adjust that. Now, I don't know if I put this on straight. It's making me nervous. So I'm going to grab a grid paper here and I'm going to check it because I am talking and not paying attention to what I'm doing. So I'm going to line up the edge of my block with the grid paper and stamp. And I'm pretty close. It's going very slightly uphill, but it's very slight. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that right in here. So cheers to new and the new gear. Now I can just go love Susan, love the camp fields, whatever. And let's add a little bling on the front of this very easy card. <laughs> no mistakes in crafting, just embellishment opportunities, right? <gasps> or creative opportunities. All right, let's grab. I'm probably going to go with, oh boy, am I out of those? Oh my gosh, wait, what? I'm not out, but I think they're downstairs because I, um, I I do a special afternoon for my direct team members once a quarter. And these particular embellishments went in their pack and they're still downstairs. Dang. All right. I was going to use the iridescent rhinestones. However, they're not here. So what should we use, friends? Hmm. Well, we've got more. We've got other things. Hang on. Oh, these might be fun. Hang on. Let me grab these guys out. Like silver. We could use these. Um, they're part of the uh, adhesive back sequin trios. The other ones are um, Berry Burst and Pretty Peacock. What else do I have? Could also go with iridescent pearls. Hmm. All right, let's just play and see what we like. And then we got to get moving because we're making a whole nother card. Come on, Susan. Get going here. Oh, yeah, these are fun. I like these. And the nice thing about sequins is they're very low profile. So in case you're wondering what the whole pack, I should be using the whole pack, right? <laughs> Here's what the whole pack looks like. You get Berry Burst, which actually is a very pale pink um, in the sequin because you can see through it. So it lightens it up a lot. That would be really fun for Valentine's Day coming up. And then the Peacock um, is just an awesome color. And we're going to use these. I want to call them white, but they're iridescent. I don't know if you can see they've got kind of a little pink and blue and green in there. All the colors. And they come in large. You get large and medium ones. I'm probably going to just use all large. Hang on. I don't know where I want to put these. I am so uh, changeable. I change my mind a lot when it comes to these kind of things. But I, you know, I like, I want to add more because it's such a long word. So I've got, um, I want to add in a medium one over here. And I'm going to move this big one to over here. And I'm going to add another. I'm going to do five on this. Woohoo! We're really, we're really throwing the confetti for New Year here. Actually, I might move this guy down here. Come here, you. All right, there. We've got a little confetti happening there. I know it's very subtle on the camera, but in person it does really show off. And then tears to you in the new year. So that is the barn door version of the Dutch door. So the Dutch door on ours, I chose to extend a piece up above the door. You don't have to do that. You can just do your greeting on the door itself like we did here, or you can extend this one up above depending on what you're doing. So very, you know, it, it's a really fun fold and it's um, a great paper saving. So this was all out of a half sheet because that's where that came from. Other than, of course, our designer paper and the layer that we added in. So let's try another one. This one is really going to be an experiment because we're using some brand new product that's going to be in the upcoming mini catalog that I have barely used. I just got this <laughs> in the mail. So um, uh, I overnighted my pre-order. So I always do a uh, what we call a box party with my team members and they um, and several of my leaders joined me for that and we got to show them all the new products. So 
Um, gosh, I, I might still add a ribbon on that. I'm going to think about that. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. So we're going to have a little fun with another barn door card. And I'm just debating, do I want to do it in white or red? Let's cut a white one here again. I use a lot of white cardstock for my projects. Um, and I always have lots on hand so that I don't have to worry about running out. So, um, but I actually already, ha I have a red one cut here so as well, so we can, I, I could, it could even do it in black. Why am I thinking black might be the way to go? Hang on. All right, we might have to go backwards with this one. You know what? I'm going to put this aside. We're going to make our embellishment part first, and then we're going to decide on our card. We're going to go the other direction on this one. Oh, oh, oh I got to move the camera over so you can't see my mess. Okay, there we go. Fixed it. <laughs> All right, so this is the cutest cow stamp set. This will be a bit available in the upcoming mini catalog. Um, it comes as a bundle, if you so choose, with the... Uh, cow punch. So this is a punch bundle. It has 24 stamped images. They are stinking adorable. You've got the 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 rooster and the the hen, but they're like on the bodies of chicks. So they're super cute because they're just little and new little tiny chick here. And then we have some different cows. Um, the the cow body is separate from the head. So these cows you would just stamp and then stamp the head of choice on the cow. So you've got lots of versatility there. This cow body and this cow head and this cow head match the punch. So this cow head does not match the punch. Neither do these bodies, but you can just stamp those on your card. I hope that makes sense. And then we also have the sunflowers, some grass, a cowbell, cowbell, right? We've got the milk, uh, the milk can, uh, a single sunflower, and then um, the eyes and the uh, nostrils and mouth. And I'll show you what those are for in just a little bit here. And then we have our sentiments. The little things you do make a big difference. Holy cow, congratulations, milk it for all it's worth. What's moo with you? Thank you. And it's your special day. So super, super cute. Um, so the cow, let's start with, let's make a cow, friends. All right. So we're going to start with uh, the Memento ink pad. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, this will fit. I've got lots of scraps. It's all good. All right. We're going to stamp our cow body here. I'm going to stamp it in uh, Memento Basic Black Ink. Where is my cow? I oh, found it. <laughs> it's clear and it was um, 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 face up, so I couldn't see it. So you can see that mine's a little bit pink. Um, two reasons. I stamped it for my team in Pecan Pie, which does is a brown, but it has a little bit pink to it. But also I think when I cleaned it on my um, my Stampin' Pad was really had a lot of red on it. <laughs> so you know what? I'm going to grab the cushion. Um, oh my gosh, those aren't all down. Oh no, they're not all downstairs. I got one right here. I got two right here. Oh my gosh. Open your eyes, Susan. Seriously. I found it, friends. It had some paper on it. So your grandfather had dairy farms and you love cows because it reminded you. Yeah, it's, it, it is funny how certain things just bring back those memories, right? So here is our adorable little cow body. And we're going to go ahead and take our punch. And we're going to punch out the body. Now I will tell you in a few minutes what these other uh, parts are on the punch. What they're for. We're going to get some bonus pieces here because this is a builder punch. But all we're after for this one is the cow body, right? And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to stamp the cow head. Um, the one I have on my block is the cow head with both eyes open. There's also one that's winking, which is super cute. I'm going to use the one that I have just hanging out here, right? So ink it up. Just move it down. I'm, oh, that was bad inking, Susan. <laughs> and stamp it on my paper right there. Oh, I do have the winking one. Okay, I didn't know which one I had. I had the winking one. All right, we're doing a winking cow, friends. That's pretty cute. It's just kind of a cartoony cow, which I think is cuter than real cows, but what do I know? It's 
certainly makes it easier, I think, to make into a card. So I am punching this up. So I've got my paper upside down. And I've slid it in my punch so that I can line it up. And again, I'm going to get bonus pieces. So we've got our cow. We've got our head. We're just going to attach that head with either a glue dot or a dimensional. You can choose. We are going to... I, you could leave your cow just like this. It's absolutely adorable. I'm actually going to color in the spots on my cow. Um, I'll color them in black. So I'll have a black and white cow. There are, um, clearly I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not very well versed in my cow knowledge. Um, and I'm trying, I'm stalling while I find my basic black marker. He has found it. Uh, of course, you could also use um, a Stampin' Blend that's in black if you prefer. I'm just going to use the standard black marker. Um, this actually can just be purchased individually. Oh, I'm going to be a messy color tonight. Okay. I'm just, I'm just doing, um, the inside and then I'm going to do the edges with my, um, with the, the fine tip because I am really sloppy tonight. My fine tip is not coloring very well. I'll have to try to be careful. Get it with this end. So just making a black and white spotted cow. You don't have to color in the spot the spots in the cow. It's super cute just leaving it. Alright. If you want to, you can color in the hoof, hoofs, hooves, <laughs> the tail, and the the um, I guess you don't call it a mane on a cow. What do you call it? The forelock or something? I'm not really sure. I'm gonna actually just leave them. Um, because we still need to build our hold card, right? So I might fill them in later, but for now we're just gonna move on. All right, my fine tip on that, that black marker is really, really old and it's clear to me I need to put a new one on my order here. Okay, all right, so we're gonna attach the head. Um, let's try it with the dimensional. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to use the mini dimensionals here. I'm gonna use probably just one right there peel off the backing and let's move moving on right there is our little cow so cute let me show you what it looked like in pecan pie right here so just stamped in pecan pie and then um, this one let's see what it looks like if you attach the head with a glue dot now, if you purchase the starter kit in December, you can put the things from the mini catalog. You can order them now uh, because the demonstrator pre-order is going on right now. All right, so here's the, I don't know that it really is showing off very well on camera, but here's the one with the dimensional and here's the one just flat. I personally prefer the dimensional, but then I always do. <laughs> um, and then let me show you on the punch. You might've been wondering, what are all these other things for? We have the body and the head, we covered that. But there's this shape, there's this shape, um, and uh, other shapes there. So what what are those for? So this, um, I don't think that's showing very well. Let me grab in my other cow. So these, uh, you can also do the cow without the stamps. Um, so this is the cow body just punched. And then I punched the head and I used the, the eyeball stamps and they even have eyebrows because cows have to have eyebrows apparently. Um, and so I added the little eyebrows. Let's go ahead and stick that head on. Why not? Let's just build our cow here. Just showing you your cow options. <laughs> and this will be available to customers in January. And then this piece right here is for the muzzle. And so you just stamp the nostrils and the mouth right there on that, which I did in pecan pie. And I punched this out of um, crumb cake. And let's see, I'm looking for my glue dots oh, right in front of my face. Found it, friends. Take a sip. And I'll go ahead and stick that on. And then it also comes with an extra little... Um, tail fluff. I don't know what the technical term is because um, you, you get the fluffy tail when you punch. But if you want to do a contrasting color on that tail, um, you can punch that out. So I punched that out of crumb cake to kind of match my muzzle there. And so I'm going to take this and just attach that. Now this also could be 
I'm just realizing that this also could be this part up there. Oh, that's really cute. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm changing my mind. That's really cute. <laughs> it can be tail fluff. It can also be the, the mane on the top, or you can do both. And then the last little piece that really confused me at first, my team helped me figure it out, was this one right here. And that is actually in the set. There are a set of horns. And so you stamp the horns. And if you want to make your cow a male cow, then you can add the little horns behind. All right. So that's what those other punches are for. Or we went the easy route with just using the stamps and just some of the punches. Right. All right. Let's make a card out of this little cute guy. Clear my mess here. This is this is why I get so messy, right? <laughs> All right, so we've got this this lone cow, um, and we're doing the barn door. So we've got a couple options. This is a card base that I already cut with uh, the barn door method that we looked at in red. Let's look at our designer paper options. I mean, that's like I think of I think of barns and I think of red, right? So the designer papers I pulled out. Hmm. Well, I only have one here. Why do I only have one? Uh, hang on. It's hard to believe, but I lost the whole other pack of paper. Oh, found it. I put it on the floor. Never mind. We're all good. <laughs> Take a sip, everyone. Oh my God, that's Having horns doesn't tell you if it's a male, a female, or a bull. Some cows have have horns, whether they're male or female. I did not know this. I did not know this. Okay, thank you, Janine, for that cow lesson. So the, the horns do, do not necessarily mean it's male. Some breeds have horns and some don't. Got it. Good to know. All right. So this is a celebration paper. Celebration is coming in January and February. And when you place a $50 order, you're going to get free things. Now, demonstrators who are putting in their pre-orders right now, we get free things now. So this is called Most Adored, and it's a free paper. So we've got the marbled flirty flamingo on one side and the gold flowers. But the reason I pulled this out was because of this paper, not the swirly gold side, but this side, I thought, that made me think of cows. <laughs> Maybe not cows, but it's got kind of a a country feel to it right so we could use this one and we could change our card base and do it in black or white right so that's one option and then what is the reason for the blue tape on your glue dot roll oh it's not tape <laughs> it's ribbon so i tie ribbon around it so that my whole roll doesn't get out of it's it's a leash for my glue dots to keep them um try to keep them in line so this way I can just pull it back for the next glue dot and it's ready to go so it's just a piece of ribbon and I have all sorts of colors all right and then there was another pattern in here now we'll take a closer look at this when we're closer to celebration but I'll give you a little peeky here's so got some floaties and go hearts but I am all about the red right now so this one has flowers on it on the other side it has red hearts which would be super cute with our little cow guy. Oh my gosh, so cute, right? Or we can look at a different paper. So I'm gonna keep these two. The other paper that would work well with this, do not even tell me, it was in my hand when I started talking. Oh, here, found it. <laughs> I crack myself up. Oh my gosh. So the, um, I call it the B paper, but that's not the name. It's called Be Mine, if you want the full name of the paper. And let me, all right. Hearts for a Valentine Cow. Yeah, I like the way you think. I like the way you think. That is a good idea. All right. So here in the B paper, we've got... The bee trails are on red. This might actually be more like sweet sorbet now that I think about it. Oh, these are pretty cute though. The little flowers would be super cute with the cow too, right? They've even got little centers. So um, we're going to go with hearts tonight though. Um, well, actually, you know what? We might use both. Let's maybe use a, um, some of each. How about that? We're, we're going to stick with the most adored celebration paper that will be available coming in January. Um, unless you're uh, getting the starter kit, you can um, put
put put catalog things in your starter kit and then after you purchase your starter kit you'll get your demonstrator id number and can order things other things and get the um the celebration opportunity you don't get celebration things in the starter kit i want to be clear about that all right i'm cutting this at two inches but if you have any questions about the starter kit and how it works and when would be the best time to sign up just uh, contact me go to suestampfield.com click on contact and I will answer that for you. This is two by five and a quarter. I don't know if I ever said that on the last card on our designer paper, two by five and a quarter. And I do have these dimensions typed up. So we'll be looking at those in a minute. And let's go ahead and do this one as well. Two. by five and a quarter and I know it can be hard it can I have a hard time sometimes um, not using the side that has the gold on it the shiny side but remember this paper is a free paper you can get more <laughs> uh, but only in January and February or right now if you're a demonstrator okay let's take our card here I think I might put the hearts on top and the I, I, I want to call it a plaid. Is it a plaid design? I guess it kind of is. Um, this on the bottom. How cute is that? All right. You guys let me know. Hearts on top or on bottom for the hearts. Let me know if the hearts should be on top or on the bottom. And while you do that, I'm going to stamp a greeting here. How about what's moo with you? Because that is just so cute. Uh, if I can find it here, it's what am I looking for? That's it's your special day. That's holy cow. What's new with you? There it is. I see it. Top, 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 top. Okay. We're in agreement on that. The hearts are going on top. And we're going to take our black here and stamp our greeting hang on i need a where is a scrap of card stock when i need one aha found it it's got a little dimensional bit on it but that's right we'll just throw that on the floor it's all good bring in sorry i'm gonna bring in my piece here and just use that oh that was bad stamping i'm gonna try it again oh maybe this should be in red hmm no, I think black. All right. What's new with you? And we can either use a die or we can punch it out. Let me see what I've got for punches. Um, is this too big? It's a little big. It might work though. Uh, let me see here. Um, the modern oval might be too big mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sorry bear with me uh so many choices i like punches a lot um could go with this route i don't think this would it, oh it would fit in the skinny one all right let's let's try that i might have to cut this a little bit okay i'm gonna just trim off this so i can reach into the punch you think it would look good on a black card base? Mm, I think you might be right. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna get a bonus with this because I'm gonna get the scallop. Is that straight, you guys? <laughs> I can't tell. All right. Let's try that. All right, you cows go hang out in the paddock over there. There we go. Is it a paddock with cows? I'm not really sure about that. Um, I think I want a circle. Not sure if I like that. Okay, hang on. Let me try it again. Let me try it again. Actually, a banner would be really cute. All right, hang on. I'm changing my mind. Oh my gosh, you guys are so patient. I think I want a little banner. Hang on. Well, let's grab our, we can do this really fast. Where's our paper trimmer? Here it is. Once again, my family is waiting for me to join them to eat supper and watch a show together. So, but I've got, I've got till 8.30. Um, I don't want to cut this at 
two maybe how wide is this let's take a look here it's a little over an inch so let's go with two and I'm gonna cut it at one all right the postage stamp punch would be cute I agree with you let's try the banner this is the pick a banner punch. You can do either the uh, regular, uh, the fishtail type or the fishtail type or the pointy type. I'm gonna try the fishtail type. So I'm gonna slide this all the way in. Ooh, I should have kept that a little longer. Can I get it? <laughs> should have kept it long and then cut it down afterwards. Whee! All right. Sound effects are optional. All right, there we go. It is longer than I need, but it, it got me what I wanted, which was the banner flag. That just seems cowish to me. Let me bring my cushion back in here. And we're gonna stamp this right there. That is really bad stamping. Oh my gosh, Sue. All right. I'm going to cut this one longer because it was too short. I'm stamping it again. I didn't have it inked up very well. So sorry, friends. Thank you for your patience. When you're using the black ink and the photopolymer, you really have to make sure you've got good ink coverage on that stamp. That's why we have the felt pads for all of the colors because they ink up the photopolymer stamps a little better or not the felt pad I'm sorry the spongy pads for all the colors this one's a felt pad so you really gotta load it up that looks better all right what's new with you and then I'm just gonna trim that to size all right <gasps> Just turn it over and restamp it. Oh, that would have been a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> good idea. <laughs> All right, let's trim this down. All right. What's new with you? All right, how are we doing on time? Do we have time to make a black card black card base? Because I, I do think that would be super cute. Oh my gosh, what a mess. You guys, I'm making a mess. What a surprise. You know you're shocked, right? I know you're shocked. Let's grab basic black. And let's uh, let's go through again how to make the barn door fun fold card. Because I only did it once at the very beginning. And some of you might have tuned in later. And we learn best by repetition, right? So I'm going to cut it four and a quarter by 11. I'm going to score at five and a half. And then I'm going to cut a section out of the front of my card without uh, creasing that score line. So I'm going to go to the two inch mark. And I'm going to slide it down until I match the little groove on the edge of my uh, slider piece that shows where my blade is to the score line. Lift up, rotate it, line up the score line in the groove here. And then I'm going to cut just where that piece uh, is cut. Just going to go to the cut line and stop. And again, you can just give a little tug on that. If it doesn't come out, I didn't go quite far enough. Now it did. So we can pull that out. And there we have our barn door. And let's see. Hello, Shirley. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I think that's going to be really cute, you guys. The red was nice, too. But the black is going to give it a little pop there and match our cow. All right, and now we are going to need a piece of white on the inside. So let's grab. I'm going to cut this the same size as. No, I'm not. I'm going to cut this a little bit smaller. So I cut our designer paper pieces two by five and a quarter, which means the one on top will slide down a little bit. So that um, inside greeting thing, I'm going to guess it's going to be about one and three quarters. 
but let's measure it, okay? Yep, I'm gonna do one and three quarters by five and a quarter. And let's see how our card came out. Now, I don't think I have a Valentine stamp up here, so I'll have to finish that at the end. I'll have to finish that later. <laughs> When I post the finished card, I can. Uh, I always post all the finished inside outside pictures on our Sue Stampfield Facebook group, so you can join me over there. So, this was one and three quarters by five and a quarter, and that's where we'll put our sentiment and our, um, our greeting. Okay, let's stick everything down. All right, where, where the heck did I put the adhesive? Got glue dots, but that's not what I want. <gasps> I got punches. I got everything. Oh, good Lord, Susan. <laughs> it was right here. You guys saw me use it. Oh, man. Oh, found it. It was under a punch. It was under the banner punch. Of course it was. Makes perfect sense. Okay, again, we're covering up gold flowers, but it's okay because this is free celebration paper and the hearts are super cute and they're totally worth it. And you can always get more paper, right? Um, how did I lose the white piece? I don't know, but I did. Hmm, all right. This is a new, is it? They put it over here? Yeah, I put it over there. All right, so let's stick that down. <laughs> uh, Valentine's greeting and throughout the year set. Oh boy, we just used that on the first card. Jennifer, you're so smart. To your left. You guys are all saying, to your left, you got it right there. Well, I did have it. Who knows where I put it? But it was right here, wasn't it? I think it's under the designer paper now. Yep, here it is. Oh. <gasps> You guys are so smart. Throughout the year, be my Valentine right there. Awesome. All right. You guys are good. All right. <laughs> and this throughout the year stamp set is actually going to be carrying over and so will still be available. The other one with the Happy New Year is not. That one is retiring, I believe. All right. We got our... Kind of bandana cow paper there. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it anyway. I even though his head has popped up on dimensionals, I am gonna add more dimensionals because I like them. Totally your choice. You could just glue dot him down, or again, you don't have to pop up the head, but it's cute if you do. All right, got our I'll just pop up the body since the head's already popped up there. You might have to go over here, I think. And then what's moo with you? And we'll pop that up too. And there's just enough room at the top of that that we can add a little piece of ribbon. Now you could wrap the ribbon around the banner. That sounds like too much work to me. So I'm going to uh, be lazy and just see what it would look like to pop this on uh, with the glue dot. Fobo, just tie a knot, right? Stick it on, grab my ribbon, snips, and my stomach's growling, I'm hungry. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna do the tails a little bit smaller on that, but that, I love this gingham ribbon and I, anything black, white, and red just really pops, doesn't it? I might go in and color his mane and his tail afterwards. We'll see. All right, where's my glue dots through there? Literally right in front of my face, as so often happens. Yeah, I agree with you. The black cardstock was, whoever suggested the black cardstock was 100% correct. Good choice. All right, now we've got our little ribbon on there and let's just add a Valentine sentiment. Be my Valentine, let's see, right here. We're not even gonna put the sticker on the back. So, ooh, I shouldn't have stuck that in. Now I, got, <laughs> now I, gotta, now I gotta get it right in one go, guys. Oh boy, 
All right. Mm, that's really crooked. And I don't have the, uh, boy. All right, I'm gonna have to test this out again, make sure it's straight, because I do not trust my eyesight. Make sure I don't stamp it upside down since I don't have the label on it yet. Ooh, that's pretty crooked. Let's try that again. Yeah, totally crooked. <laughs> this is why you should put your labels on your stamps so you can tell when they're straight or not. But we're speed stamping here, so I'm not going to do it. Now it's going uphill, but it's better. All right, we're going to go with this. And if it's crooked, then we just know that it was a one-of-a-kind handmade item and they won't think it's store-bought then, right? There we go. A little uphill, but not too bad. Be my Valentine. Let's get this random dimensional off of here. <laughs> All right, and there we have, uh, let's close the barn door so the cow doesn't get out. Well, he's already out. That's okay. So cute. So this is the cutest cows bundle. This will be available in the January mini catalog that's coming out soon or if you get it and get the starter kit you can put that in your starter kit right now and save a little money so be my valentine and then where's the other one we made where's our happy new year oh here it is here's our happy new year boy that's uh and on the inside of the happy new year we also used the throughout the year for the cheers to you and the new year so um, let's bring in our dimensions for this so that you can do a screenshot if you would like to slide this away. Let me ask you, do you think we should do this as a, should I do this as a project sheet in a future project sheet email? We are going to do the Dutch door for sure. Do you want the barn door as well? There you go. So you can take a screenshot. So cute, right? So fun. All right, put that aside. Yes, yes on a project sheet. Okay, good to know. I'm gonna flip the camera here. So if you want to make sure to not miss out on the project sheet emails, you can subscribe right there. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for helping me design these cards. Um, I think we did really good. <laughs> they came out great. So thanks for all your help. As always, I appreciate so much that you are making and sending handmade cards to make the world a kinder place. Have a great rest of your weekend, everyone, and I'll be back on Tuesday evening at 7.30 Central Time with another creative adventure. Bye-bye.